so I, I was on this theme, COVID blues and overcoming stress. Uh, this is, you. your language is going to change. You are going to say, I'm an overcomer. I'm not a victim. Otherwise, different aspects of COVID will try to run over you. Now, I hope to do a bit of a medical talk tomorrow on long COVID syndrome. I hope to do it at two o'clock tomorrow. So everybody be on alert tomorrow, two o'clock on the same lines. And I will send you the, a Zoom. Uh, uh, it's a bit of a technical one. Uh, good for doctors, good for caretakers, but good for you. It will be more technical on COVID. But today it will be more on the stress part of what COVID is doing to people. Also, uh, uh, for instance, uh, many don't know much about long COVID syndrome. Uh, the COVID uh, virus does a, it's a mainly immune problem and develops antibodies against the ACE2 receptor. Then some people who never had uh, hypertension, high blood pressure, begin to develop bl high blood pressure. So I'll be talking uh, uh, quite a bit of a technical talk, but necessary for everybody to know tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, but today this will be on the uh, stress issues and similar issues of COVID. So here we go. Uh, since uh, this problem has been attended on, what you do is reduce your demand and plan, pays out, and prioritize the three P's. In, in these days, decide what you must do. Then that is the planning then pays out how much you will do during a morning session or evening session. I generally plan my day into, let's say four hour slots. What I do from uh, six o'clock till 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock till two o'clock, two o'clock till six o'clock PM, and then uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so you get more out of life by, so imagine the scale when the demand is high, stress is high. And then your skill to cope with it is less. So increase your supply. If you are working for someone, tell your boss, boss, give me a little time that uh, I want to improve my skills. Please reduce the demand a little till I get my balance back. But I said already you have seven skills within yourself. Little more about COVID blues because everyone is worried about it. Uh, the best Post best convalescence treatment for COVID is rest. You have to take a lot of rest because COVID is a very unusual immune inflammatory attack on all the body tissues. And even your molecules at, at a cellular level has gone through an acceleration. So any bit of stress, any bit of fast pace makes you feel worse after COVID. So at least for four weeks after COVID, plan to take complete rest. You know, people after COVID want to get back to work soon, uh, you know, arrange the, arrange the room and things like that. Please don't do your watching, catch up on this, that and the other. No, you need four weeks of rest. Higher your CRP was, C-reactive protein, meaning how much your body tissues were involved in the inflammation, more rest you need. So that's how it goes. Uh, now we are going to look, and, and one more fact I like to tell you is uh, good sleep is very necessary because good sleep promotes melatonin. Melatonin is a lot involved in our immunity besides our sleep. Uh, so uh, get your LED consumption low. Don't be on the pixel screen and TV screen incessantly. Don't keep looking at COVID news that make you feel more uh, traumatized, more stressful. Don't relive the drama all the time. And remember, everybody around you is also exhausted. So don't put, put them through the mill. They lovingly looked after you, did as much as they can for you. So the whole family must have a post-COVID policy of not alarming each other. Every cold is not COVID back. And keep away from dust. Because some of you during COVID might have been on dexamethasone if some kind of steroid. And uh, your physician may require to uh, uh, continue it for some time. Uh, then uh, don't meddle with dust. Dust has protein particles that can aggravate the allergic damage or the immune problem the lung or the gut went through. 
and don't go to touch plants and so on. Uh, don't try to clean up old clothes and old bookshelves and things like that. Completely, uh, as much as possible, a sterile existence. We know homes are not sterile. What I mean is, don't go uh, with this Aspaskarana syndrome. I was in one place, I must get everything. Uh, some, uh, some people are clean or nuts. They have to get every bit of dust out. So please, for the next four weeks, no such thing. And uh, there is a thing called mucomycosis, the black fungus, which is very rare, uh, that comes from some infected source that you got into, you know, so don't meddle with this, that, and the other. Uh, be in the room and least, uh, the, the, uh, less and less exposure to anything uh, for the four weeks. That's how you preserve your convalescence. So here are the seven things that you already have to cope with stress. I wonder whether I can get my slide presentation on Dhananji. I send it to you on WhatsApp. Are you able to get it? Ah, that's right. That's a very nice. Thank you, Dhananji. So here are the seven character facilities. Uh, COVID blues, the next one is. Uh, the first one is intuitive. Spec uh, uh, shall we have a look at the second one so that they see the balance? Uh, the Taradir. Uh, there it is. Can you see that? Demand on one side, if it's too heavy, supply or skill level on the other side, it's uh, the, your resources, uh, not enough. That is what stress. This is the equilibrium balance. So re reduce your demand that you put on yourself, improve your skill if possible. Next slide. Now, this is how we live one hour at a time. You can say, good shepherd, help me to live one, at a, one hour at a time. Now there was a whole chorus, one day at a time. Now we are saying one hour at a time because that's how the default mode network of thought works. Uh, so here for first 40 minutes of the hour, B do salience, that is a dopamine gives you focus, initiate, navigate, successful conclusion, good reward. When you are stressed, you don't, you initiate too many things. You don't complete anything. So remember one thing at a time, initiate, navigate. If you find you start and not you're not completing it, that's the stress mode. So you tell yourself, no, I'll do one thing at a time and complete it. You might take longer than normal, but that's all right. One thing at a time completing is good thing. That is salience, dopamine works with you. And then after 45 minutes, you check back. How did I do it? Was it good? Uh, so you have no alarm in it, no anxiety in it. You, serotonin work, dopamine works for salience, working to focus, initiation, navigation, successful inclusion, success, conclusion, and that success sense, rewarded sense come from dopamine, it comes from serotonin. When you look back and have a good look at it and say, ah, oh, that needs improvement, uh, that I did well. Uh, stressed people can't look back on the thing, they shudder. They are you, it was a mess, you know, they make overstatement. It was a mess, I'm not going to do it again, terrible, it'll kill me. So don't use words like that because your words you believe more than anybody else's work. So don't make your verbal diarrhea make you more stress, yes. Uh, so you look back and say, I can improve it. That reduces stress. I can improve it, you can practice it. What was the last thing you did? And then stressed people assess themselves too high as if you are perfectionist. Perfectionist people get into stress more. Uh, so here is the, that is the default mode network. That's how we live one hour at a time. Uh, so I want to get back to the seven uh, skill enablements you have. Uh, here it is, I did this last Saturday a little, but I want to do it again more thoroughly and get on to some new topics. Here it is. For through the grace given, don't think too highly of yourself, but think adequately of yourself. Otherwise the stressed person begins to say, I can do nothing, nothing properly. I'm always short, uh, this, that, and the other. You, you say bad things, put down things about yourself that makes the stress worse. So think adequately, don't think too highly. Then you 
take on too many things to increase your demand. Don't think too less about yourself. So there has to be a good shepherd inside you, helping you with your inside thoughts. There has to be a pax meter inside, thermometer. Now, pax is the, the Latin for peace. You have to keep your peace inside, which says, I'm able this much. And the, 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 that sense of what you can do is the internal peace. What you have done well is the internal reward. So this triangle is grace, the, the gift, the grace, and the measure. So some people can do a job or an enterprise that helps you to feed your own family. Other people can do enterprise to feed 10 families. Other people can be a chairman of uh, institutions or business uh, enterprise that is uh, that can have uh, livelihoods of 10,000 families. I have three friends. They are chairman of companies that employ 10,000 families. And during this COVID time, they asked the good shepherd to help them that they will not have to retrench people. They will, their business will not be disrupted by COVID and that they will not have to reduce salaries. All of them were successful with the goals they set. That was a real God blessing. So you can be successful in the things you are called to do. So don't panic. Uh, get the help of the good shepherd also. So the gift, grace, gift, grace, and the measure. Then there, each one of us has an entrepreneur, manager, and the technocrat. Entrepreneur, manager, technocrat. Now, some are very strong in their technical ability, maybe a doctor, lawyer, teacher, whatever. That's the technical ability. Then entrepreneur is how much of it can you develop further on? We are coming into that. And the manager is good management any day. Now, some of you, some of us may not be good managers, excellent technocrats. Some of us may not may be excellent technocrats, not good entrepreneurs. We don't know how to market ourselves, uh, which is a secular word. Uh, we don't know how to make our space bigger with the good thing we have. So that quality, so I gave you uh, two triangles to work with. Uh, here is uh, how it is said. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace and according to the measure. So the first one is called intuitive, speculative, imaginative projection, entrepreneurial gift. That is from here, how much more is possible? Now, this works with researchers like me also. We get into us, uh, this much is known, this much is not known. So researcher has the intuitive sense of what is known, what is not known, and how to get to the next point. That's the researchers, intuitive, speculative, imaginative, the next steps. Uh, invest is also like that. Where, where, where should I invest? What actuaries? What are the trends, business trends that will be profitable in this season? So it's a foresight thing about things to come, foresight. That's a sense of foresight in, involved in business involved in provisions, involved in research. It's there also with people of art. They see what others don't see. That, that's, so this gift also can be called as see what others don't see, hear what others don't hear, feel what others don't feel. This is a gift that will be useful in any field. So it's an intuitive gift. And uh, Good Shepherd gives us each according to what we need to invest or meet at. So that's a good gift to have. The second one is called serving. The Greek word for that is diakonia. It means the one who has the entrepreneurial or see future one can think very big, you know, but they also need to have a simple service. So any, any good chairman will, if someone falls in front of him, he'll have a gift to serve. He will get down and help that person. Uh, that is also part of life, hope chose. I think I told you this before. Harvard has done a research on how children who do home chores do much better in their uh, 
uh, undergraduate work. So that is serve and manage. That, so when someone manages, he's actually serving another's technocratic gift, another's entrepreneurial gift with day-to-day -day management. Then comes the third one, to some he gives to be teacher, technical. Uh, so that is a, a accountancy. They, they work on a line. Their person, personality can be inflexible. They need to know that because their field is inflexible. When a, child, when a teacher says, how much is nine times nine? And a child says 99, very sweet of you, darling. You can't say that nine, time, nine times nine, even with Eskimos is 81. Uh, so any part of the world, nine times nine is 81. So these are disciplines that they don't shift. Uh, so th those people have that kind of, uh, what shall I say, inflexible law. They insist on what that which is right. Accountants have to do that. So these are professions or disciplines uh, which might be your technocratic skill. Uh, so you need to know that, uh, the teacher and so on. Uh, you need to get on with people also and develop the other skills that I'm now mentioning. So now we did the entrepreneurial future seeing, future stepping gift. Parents need to have this for their children. Uh, any uh, institution needs the forward development of their people. See how much each one can. That's the entrepreneurial gift. Everybody can't the same measure, though with the same qualification. Uh, second one is the serving thing that everybody needs to acquire that, the humble service attitudes. Uh, third thing is the teacher, technical, technocratic part of us. Fourth one is the encourager. Uh, this is the HR person, the Barnabas. Uh, the Greek word is paraklesis. It means come alongside another strength to strengthen it. Similarly, come alongside another's weakness to strengthen it. Uh, so that's how the HR people need to think. That's a necessary field. And you may, the coach is like that. You hang the cricket ball and go in front of a mirror and show the boy uh, how do you play the cricket ball with no gap between the bat and pad. So you are helping someone else's skill. You are doing it with patience. You are not commanding. This is not teaching and instruction per se. This is coming alongside. So that is a very important field of human endeavor or human service to come alongside. Uh, the next one is how to invest money how to invest money, uh, money investment and money usage. So whether you are rich by birth or you are rich by uh, earning, what you need to do is that uh, you must always have a part of your money income serving others. At a very simple level, when you have money enough to buy some vegetables, you are serving that vegetable vendor's vocation or his family livelihood. When you're able to employ an electrician, when you employ a welder or whatever, you know, mechanic, what are you doing with your money earning? You're supporting another's enterprise. That's a very important principle in life because God created life, giving different people different skills. And he gave the skills as a family of skills. So in, in this great human family that uh, he has given gifts and skills to everyone. Very sadly, you can see that 2020, when it should have been a real 2020 vision year, 2020 became a very dark year because COVID was made by human beings and the virus was made in a lab. There's indisputable proof towards that. Uh, I'm Dr. Lal Nandis. My last post was as head of the Department of Pharmacology in the State Medical Faculty. That's why I speak about pharmacology a lot. Uh, today, I didn't speak much about pharmacology. Uh, but there is, uh, there is a drug available, cheap drug, that if you take it, uh, even if you're vaccinated, it's good to take it because it's just once a week dose. Uh, so my uh, talks and my, if you need to know more about this, please send me uh, a WhatsApp to plus 9476 313 4800. Please don't phone me. Please just send a WhatsApp to. Uh, plus 94-76-313-4800. You can also have my talks on my app, Golden Nuggets, Dr. Lalit Nandis. It's free to download from Google 
or from uh, or from App Store. It has all my talks. This is my 261st scientific talk. So I came up to the point how uh, how your your money is meant to serve others. That's how God's work. Uh, so we lived in 1950, just after the Second World War, uh, when man destroyed man, just after the Second World War. Uh, we God equalized the world in a sense, and we had an excellent chance. Uh, for any nation to grow well. Of course, in 1948, Sri Lanka was a great nation. Uh, as, at the end of the, world, world, end of the World War II, we were so rich, we were able to give a grant, a, a British pound grant to Britain, because Sri Lanka's economy was so good. In 1948, our rupee was equal to a US dollar. You know, it was finger licking good at that time. Now it's, it's gone down a lot, very sadly. Uh, but the point I'm making is God did a reprieve in 1950 for all the nations soon after the Second World War. How do we know that? Korea was, South Korea was really down after the Korean War. And any bad place in Sri Lanka was called Korea for that reason. Because it was so bad. Uh, but South Korea came up so well and was able to become an industrial giant with brands like Samsung and uh, Hyundai, and it became a top economic nation, which means anyone could have become, become a top economic nation. We, of course, from, from having been a top uh, economy, best in Asia, uh, better than any in Africa or South America, and Sri Lanka, Ceylon, then of course was better than most nations of Europe after the Second World War. That's how good our economy was. We ran down, that's sad. But between 1970 and 2020, while there was every reason for every nation to grow well, like South Korea, there were other factors operating that few people increasingly got their fingers into many, many economic strands or streams. They began to control uh, what people should buy, sell, and eat and drink. So this was the consumerist extravaganza, and it was push the demand and increase the supply. We will have unending economic growth. That was John Maynard Keynes, Keynesian economics. And many nations followed this, and we went up producing too much in areas that we don't need. Armament, motor industry, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, illness, wellness, health industry, fashion, IT, toys, confectionaries were the world's seven leading cons consumerist industries. With that plummeted health, education, housing, uh, even, uh, yes, and education, health, housing, and of course, the food. Uh, but the, the, uh, the health of foods we eat all plummeted. So by 1990, 90% of the world's GDP was driven by 10% of people. By 2020, 99% of the world's economy was driven by 1% of people. They were real oligarchs, Plutarchs. And in 2020, the whole thing became so much worse. It created 15 new billionaires in one year. And the existing very rich ones got three times more rich. Uh, so, uh, so now we know that trillions of dollars go outside legal government and the world is ready for grabs. And those who knew that launched the COVID grab. COVID is nothing but grabbing of nations and populaces and their future. Think a little, all this when man place God, and we made science God. I think scientists who are 70 years old, who really worked very hard, they are out of deciding. So famous scientists like Professor Christian Perron of France and other Luc Montagnier, they are protesting about the way the pandemic and the pandemic has been managed to the advantage of few people and how much profit is made on it in the name of pharma and other things that are marketed. 
So those 70 year old scientists who really worked hard for science and came uh, instantly, Professor Luc Montagne is the one who defined HIV and uh, got the Nobel Prize for it. Uh, so they are men of esteem, uh, men of uh, repute, integrity, and they really did science very well. But they have handed, now they are older, and science has been taken over by a group of, I don't know how to call it. They make science as they go now. They call it broader perspective. Issue came to a head in UK uh, when the Royal College of Pediatricians and JCVI, the scientific body regarding immunity and you know what else, recommended that kids uh, don't need it. But anyway, politicians decide they need it. Thankfully in Sri Lanka with some good advice, our pediatricians held otherwise and they kept what the Royal College of Pediatricians asked. So you can see other than science is deciding pandemic science. Yes, I say it with great responsibility and you can read it in my blog, Dr. Lattinendi's blog, WordPress, or in my uh, scientific talks. As I told you, if you need any more clips, please send me a WhatsApp number to plus 94763134800. So I was at this point of money managing. Uh, so just a bit of my credentials. I was head of department of uh, the state, uh, the state medical faculty head of department of pharmacology. Also, I came first in the island. In the A-level examination in 1970, you will say that was a long time ago, from my school, St. Thomas's College. And six of us got to uh, medical faculty. One became a professor of genobs. One is a cardiologist in, in Adelaide. Another sadly passed away, our head prefect at that time, Dr. Salat Abikun. He was a uh, oncologist, I became head of department of pharmacology. Other two are practicing abroad. So uh, many of my batch, uh, first 10 are not there. I, I was the batch top of every examination in the Colombo Medical Faculty. Uh, I gave you a little background because when I make scientific statements, I need, I need you to know I'm saying something of uh, credibility, yes. But let's get back to what we are about, overcoming COVID blues and not becoming a victim, but becoming an overcomer. So about money management, I told you, any bit of money you have earned for yourself can serve another's job or vocation also. So we would like to employ an electrician, we would like to employ plumbers, mechanics, and we would like to pay them gladly what they deserve, because that's how God expects money to be managed. The Good Shepherd has given everyone entrepreneurial skill, management skill, technocratic skill. So once technocratic skill has to be entrepreneurially handled by others who need it. That's, that's God's work, uh, give and take work. So he, he does well, you do well. Then of course, if you have money enough to invest, uh, what you do is 50% okay, you keep for any investment you think money can be safely invested in. Other 50% you invest in livelihoods, work fields where others earn livelihoods. That's, God, that's God's heart. God is a good shepherd and he wants to provide a green field and a water hole for everyone. So he says, I'm your shepherd. I will, I manage the world that all have enough. I manage the world that others help others. Be fruitful, multiply, fill and fulfill, and then steward. This was the first mandate. Steward the gift and space of others as much as you can. This was the world that was designed. Now, COVID has only nastily precipitated man's nature where uh, Orwell, George Orwell in 1984 uh, pr projected a world, he called it Animal Farm, sadly, where a few get so much into their hands as it has happened now. They will start dictating global dictates. They have started with health, whether it will go to economics next or politics next, LGBTQ rights, we are to wait and see. But they have found a, a very clever a cunning, ruthless way of 
invading other people's lives. Yes, uh, it is uh, when you see the description, you are alarmed that such fruitless policies have come to stay with scientific backing here, yeah, which is of course not science, but it is made up science to deceive people. So that is money and investment. Leadership, sixth quality is leadership. Leadership is about making space and time for others. Uh, so a leader sees the opportunity and makes the space for others. That's what a leader is. Last one, in the gift pack you have. So I have started with the intuitive entrepreneurial aspect in you, a character faculty, if you may. I use two things, character, it has to do with character. It's a faculty. It has to, it's like, you know, you know what a faculty is. Yeah, it's a thing. And then it's also, there's an emotional package that comes with each of those things. So you need to find out how you manage the, the skill set you have. Uh, God is no data. He has given to all freely and uh, generously. And he expects us to reciprocate to others in that way, which we will not do without a change of heart. Speaking to myself, if I had been the arrogant, conceited chap I was when I was finishing A-level, first in the island, thinking no, no, no end to myself, uh, that's the way I was going. Uh, so, so pumped up in my head. Then I realized as my head and the intellect brilliant shone forth, my heart shrank. I often say it's like Boyle's law, increase in pressure, decrease in volume. They are in an inverse relationship. Thankfully, through a set of circumstances, I began to realize when my brain is becoming brilliant, my heart is not necessarily becoming warmer. In fact, it's the other way around. So that's how my change came. So the last one in this list is mercy. And the world needs this mercy faculty very much. And a wisdom that comes from above rather than the wisdom that talks about survival of the fittest. If you take it to the uh, ruddy end that people are trying to take it, survival of the fittest, then you will decide some human beings are not fit for survival. So already abortion is on. Some places infanticide. Now others may decide what other humans have to be eliminated to make planet eco-safe. Such discussions are going on. What human beings should be eliminated who are not very productive? Such So Herbert Spencer, the father of eugenics soon after, soon after um, Darwin made that state that we need to carefully see what human beings are worthy or profitable for earth to do and what to do with others. Human beings have thought about it before us, before this day, and they will think about it again. Yes, that's the way it goes when you think of survival of the fittest. But God has made a world not for the survival of the fittest, that all may work, thrive together. That's the Good Shepherd's idea. All may thrive together. So mercy is a big faculty that is very needed and family is that first unit where mercy is to work. So when you export your kids to other countries to do their first degree, they become selfish looking after themselves. A whole lot of parents left former countries, look up by who? That's the way it is going. Children have been taught to seek their own future. I mean, this is a very sad thing, but mercy, even in the family, is at a very low level. So if the husband and wife split up, that mercy becomes a dwindling community. And if we don't make family, mercy becomes, if we just, just get on the, the best sexually happy, lucky go away, then mercy becomes a very reduced quality. So in this list of seven, it is wisdom that mercy is there. If you ask me, what can you do with mercy? Which profession majors on mercy? I suppose med medical profession must major on mercy, isn't it? You like your doctor to smile. You like your doctor to wait till you sit down to put your, get your name. And you like your doctor to tell you uh, what your disease is about and tell you why, he, why he's prescribing that drug and this drug why he's changing, why he's asking for investigation. Nothing of this happened. Uh, so I was on the ethics committee of SLMA in 1996 when we drafted the patient's rights charter. Uh, then our mother, my, 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 
SLMC said, uh, please make it health rights charter because patients rights charter might be a little too incendiary. Uh, so that's what we did. So we did it as the health rights charter. Excellent document. My name is also on it. Uh, so as long as I was in the faculty, I used to do the medical ethics seminar. Uh, it, it is significant that in 1972, the year I entered Colombo Medical Faculty, the International Medical Association changed the oath of Hippocrates. Oath of Hippocrates said, and we had to say, it, we said it, old Dr. Austin was the chief guest, at least the, the, the one who addressed us, and he got us to repeat uh, the oath of Hippocrates. And we had to say, uh, I, as, a medical, as a medical practitioner, I will not help a woman to procure an abortion. We had to say, it. IMA canceled it in 1972, it's no more there in the oath. Yeah. All Hippocrates might be turning in his grave. That's how much the nose dive our profession has taken. This is under the faculty of mercy. Now I showed you the slide on the, uh, if you are joined later, Dharanjay, can we have the slide on the scale? Uh, scale, if you don't mind a little ahead. Uh, oh, that's right. There I show you. You can find the demand if the demand is too much and your resources are too little, not enough, you get stressed. Then the next next slide I explained to you uh, was the salience followed by satisfaction, satiety, mediated by serotonin. Now we get to the next slide that is explaining to you that I hope you can see this in your computer or I don't know if you have a phone, if you're on Zoom with the phone, you might not see this. But uh, yeah, those who are on my timeline will not see it. What I do is I'll, I'll send the whole slide show, PowerPoint show, it's not very big, on your WhatsApp. If some of you I can see, I already have your WhatsApp. Uh, so those who are on my timeline will not see it, but on the Zoom line, you will see it. So those who have I have the WhatsApp, I will send you this new slide preparation I have done, COVID blues and overcoming stress. The theme is we are not going to be victims, we are going to be overcomers. God helping us, Good Shepherd helping us. Uh, so others of you who, who are not on my uh, phone, please send a WhatsApp number to 094763134800 then I will get you this slideshow. I don't know whether I can load it on my timeline. Uh, so the this slide is important, character, curriculum, career choices. First track is we normally think prefrontal cortex, we think through and, and we have, uh, we have e executive empathic, reflective, creative, initiation, navigation, and conclusion, reward, successful reward, and decision-making track with the prefrontal cortex. When we get stressed, or when children are too much digitized, there are things that push us to the bottom-up regulation. COVID is one, post-traumatic stress disorder. Bad thing happened one year ago, you feel as if it happened yesterday. So your dreams are always unpleasant, did you understand? If you end up dreams unpleasant, you're on bottom-up regulation. What must we do? We must be on top-down regulation. Thinking begins and execution with the prefrontal cortex. Bottom-up regulation is your amygdala, hypothalamus, and hippocampus is doing the job, taking you back to the last thing. And the last hour or the last, last day, stress is pushing you forward and you're just on a pushed forward mode. That needs attention, not necessarily pharmacological attention. Uh, drugs that meddle with the brain don't do very well. It, it's difficult to recover health with pharmaceuticals only when the brain is involved. When antibiotics are involved, it's completely different. Same with hypertension. Drugs can be very effective. But when your sleep is involved and your mood is involved and your perception of stress and anxiety, it, all that cannot be managed with pharmaceuticals alone. So one, it needs a different lecture, how to get you from bottom-up regulation. What is bottom-up regulation? The last bad thing, stimulating. You don't even think about it, but that's how we operate. 
So all the impulses that come from outside there, 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 there I'm hurt, victimized. It's never going to be better. You understand? Yes. Next slide. I'm going to skip the next slide. Then Anjay, can we go to slide? Yes. The slide with the graph. That's an important slide. How repeated anger spikes, drives you to bottom up regulation. <clears throat> I hope you can work on the x axis and the y axis. Can you see the small curve inside? small curve inside, you can see that you react slower, peak of anger is smaller, and you get back to base easier. Bigger curve shows you that your anger summit comes fast, and during the summit, you don't know what you're doing, and you take long for the anger reflex to come down, and the next one may trigger while you have not fully come down to base level, you can have a continual level of anger. So that's just a picture. Uh, this is an important uh, slide to have. It's on my timeline already. But as I said, if you send me your WhatsApp number, I will send you that slide. It's original slide that I have done. Next one is performance versus anxiety. Can you see that? Again, I'm, my apologies to those who are on my timeline. This is for the Zoom line. That is on the y-axis, you have performance. On the x-axis, you have anxiety. You can see uh, before exams, when you're a little anxious, you, your, your adrenal cortical axis is tuned up and you do well, even at interviews. Yeah. But beyond a certain point, that uh, anxiety level decreases your performance. So you have to keep your anxiety level managed. Otherwise, your performance goes down. Next slide is psychological symptoms of stress and anxiety, fearful anticipation. So you begin the day and go for anything, fear in the worst. You have to break that, isn't it? So that means bottom up regulation. Irritability, sensitivity to noise. You, you can't take anything. You, of course, some young fellows may jazz it up so much, but you feel any sound is very difficult to bear. Uh, restlessness. Uh, this is uh, not the physical symptoms. Symptoms of stress and anxiety slide before that. So fearful anticipation, none of that. Don't worry, I'll carry on. Sensitivity to nice, restlessness, poor concentration, boring thoughts. Next one, I think, is uh, next one is physical symptoms, sleep disturbances, insomnia, and dr dreams are always bad. That needs attention. Again, I repeat. Don't self-medicate yourself. Don't just take sleeping tablets. Meet a clinical psychologist or a family physician who will sit with you and get, allow you to ask questions. Just don't go to someone who prescribed drugs and say, come again. That will not work for this kind of problems. Next slide is physical symptoms, gastrointestinal, dry mouth, difficulty in swallowing, if, you know, you feel butterflies in the stomach, you know, uh, frequent loose motions, difficulty in, and some people have irritable bowel syndrome and some trigger migraine. This is a subject on which I'm published on the PubMed. Yeah, that's the main medical index. Uh, we did some uh, major studies on irritable bowel syndrome when I was a registrar to the professor of medicine, Colombo. It's a big article. It's available on PubMed. Clip can be sent. The link can be sent if you're interested in the subject, but it's a medical one. Now, remember, tomorrow at 2 p.m., I would do a talk on long COVID syndrome here, tomorrow at 2 p.m. in English language. I will do the similar talk in single language at 3 p.m. tomorrow. You can tell your friends to expect. And if you want a Zoom link sent of the singular one, or tomorrow's English one on long COVID, you have to send a WhatsApp number to my WhatsApp number a request. Uh, so difficulty in inhaling or breathing, you feel the respiratory pa, 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 pa. palpitation. Palpitation is definition is you, you feel your heartbeat. It's not a disease, just that you're anxious. You, you, you feel your heartbeat. Normal people don't feel their heartbeat, but heart is beating. Now, this is an important one. Will you get that slide done on slide number 12? That's an important one. 
I will fail. In anxiety and stress, you said, I will fail. I am useless. Those are your thoughts. Then your feelings are anxious and tense. And you avoid people. That's your behavior. So that your thoughts change, feelings change, behavior change. Then physical responses of tachycardia and, you know, uh, sweating and things like that. Uh, you need to watch it. And there are things you can do to de-escalate stress. Yes. Begin with attending on your sleep rhythm. Recovering sleep is the first thing for recovering, getting over stress. So what is the principle? You must get back to executive empathy. Every hour, keep it productive. Reward. It's a default mode network thought. Put your timetable every hour to do things, only what is possible in that hour. It is good to get a good reward during that hour. It is good to initiate, navigate, successful in conclusion. It, it may be a puzzle. It may be gardening. It may be running with your dog. It may be hanging the cricket ball as we used to do in our school days and, you know, take aim, talk. The sound of the cricket ball, the leather ball is a good thing. The aim and talk, talk, talk. It may be a table tennis game. Important thing is that 40 minutes you initiated, navigated, achieved something and look back and say, it was good. That's how you break stress. When you are able to say, I was rewarded. Because with stress, you lose your sense of being rewarded. You feel you're useless. So this slide is very useful. I think I will put it on my timeline. Those of you who are on my phone, I will certainly send this. It's very useful to have and understand yourself in times of crisis. What's our theme? In COVID blues, I'm an overcomer. I'm not a victim. Uh, please believe me, the Good Shepherd is very helpful for such time because our brain can take that much and no more. But we have a spirit created in the image of the Good Shepherd. It takes a lot of sorrows. It can take a lot of love. And it can give a lot of love. And this is a time world needs not more knowledge. World needs more love. I can tell you as a person who has all my life worked with my head. I still do. But my conclusion is, world does not need more knowledge. World needs more love and empathy. And we need a good shape to keep us tracking on. I think I must stop now. Thank you for listening. There are a few more slides, but the main thing has been done. Uh, thank you for joining. So tomorrow, 2 o'clock, long COVID. It's a technical thing. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., same thing in Singhala. Let your friends know. If you want a Zoom link, let, let us know. Thank you.